Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video we're going to solve this problem from the MCQ section of electrostatics. So this problem is based on the concepts of electrostatic shielding and we'll discuss the and we'll kind of brush up on the required theory that we need to solve this problem. So first let's begin with the problem statement. So we have a thin conducting shell uh, whose radius is R and it carries a total charge of Q. Now two point charges plus Q and plus 2Q are placed at the points A and B respectively. So now it's given that the shell is earth meaning that its potential is made zero and the question is how much charge will flow to the earth. So give this problem a good try for like 5 to 10 minutes and then check out the solution later. So now let's begin. So the first concept is the concept of electrostatic induction. Uh, if we have a neutral conducting sphere so on the left side and if we bring a positive point charge Q in its vicinity then what will happen is there will be there will be electric field due to this point charge at each individual points inside our sphere. And as a reason to kill this electric field uh, caused by this point charge Q charges actually get induced on the surface something like this and the, and the surface charge distribution uh, it, it'll clearly vary with position and the charges will distribute themselves uh, in, a, in a unique manner so that the generated electric field due to the induced charges let's call it E induced will exactly cancel the kq by r square so the magnitude of E induced will be minus kq by r square in the r cap direction okay so so this is the whole concept of induction now the sigma of uh, the surface charge density is um, going to vary so it will be a function of some r and theta so the thing so the points closer to q will have a high surface charge density and as it you know and as we go along the sphere the surface charge density becomes less and less and to get a quantitative idea kind of but a exact surface charge density is not important anyway in our question so the only thing that i want to discuss here like let's call this point as point o so the electric field uh, at point O, that is basically the electric field inside the meat of a conductor basically, this has to be zero in electrostatic situation because otherwise the charges present at this point will move and the charges will keep on moving uh, until the electric field at the point O becomes zero. Okay, so now the thing is even if you move this point charge Q to somewhere over here, uh, sigma of the sphere will change, uh, it will be something like this, right? But still, uh, the whole point of these charges arranging themselves in this way is to ensure that the electric field at each point inside the conductor is zero. So that was concept number one. Okay, so now let's say we, we consider a spherical cavity at some location over here. And let's say we put a charge of plus Q inside over here. Now the thing is, this plus Q charge uh, won't feel any field due to this plus Q charge over here. And the reason for that is the charges will come outside. Again, because of induction, we know that the charges at each point inside our sphere is going to be zero, right? So as a result, this plus Q charge over here won't feel any field uh, as it is placed inside the conductor. So the thing is, uh, if you ask this plus Q, is it, is it feeling any electric field? It will say absolutely not. So it is as good as saying this charge Q did not even exist, right? So we'll be using this particular idea to solve this problem as you will see it in the solution. Okay, so now let's say we get rid of all the charges. That now as it is a neutral conducting sphere, the net charge everywhere is zero. Okay, so and now let's say we bring a plus Q charge and place it at the center of our cavity. So now the thing is again, the basic concept is that the electric field uh, inside the material of the conductor has to become zero in electrostatic conditions. Okay, so now let's say I take a Gaussian surface uh, of this sort, the exact shape is not important here because the thing is we know that the electric field at each point on the Gaussian surface must be zero as it is present inside the conductor, right? So as we know that the electric field at each point is zero, we can say that the surface integral of the electric field, if you compute this integral, it should also come out to be zero, right? And we know that the surface integral of uh, the electric field is actually equal to the enclosed charge within the Gaussian surface upon epsilon naught. So this would give us the fact that the enclosed charge must be zero. But the thing is there is some enclosed charge present over here, right? That is plus Q charge. So hence to ensure that the Q enclosed within the Gaussian surface is zero, some negative charges will start getting induced at the inner surface of our cavity, something like this. And the thing is, if you place Q exactly within the center uh, of the sphere, then the ch sigma inside will be uniform. Okay, but otherwise it won't be uniform. So anyways, so the charges will induce at the inner surface of the cavity and sigma Q that is due to induced charges, that is the net charge that is induced on the inner surface of the cavity. This should all 
add up to minus q because only then net q enclosed for this Gaussian surface be zero. Okay, so in short, if we place a charge q over here and let's say we displace a charge plus q to some point over here, then the thing is the sigma will change, The like the sigma of the inner surface will change. So the sigma closer to the charge will be high and the sigma further away will be less. But the thing is the overall charge, if you add up all the individual charges, it should give you the answer as minus q. So now as this is a neutral conducting sphere and these minus charges are actually a part of the conductor itself right so and so in order to maintain the neutrality of the conductor uh, positive charges will get induced on the outer surface of a conductor and the sigma of the outer surface guys it will be uniform now why is it uniform uh, it's partly because of the reason that the positive charges on the outer surface is not feeling any field because of this plus q charge and this if you pick up a dq charge on the surface let's say this charge it is not feeling any field because of the charges present inside the induced charges and the plus q charge will have an overall effect of zero net field at this particular point. So the charges on the surface will just spread themselves in a symmetric manner. Now, if, again, if you bring an outside, again, the sigma is going to be distorted because of induction. Okay, so uh, with that, we can also talk about one more interesting thing. Let's say uh, the charge plus Q, we displace it by a small amount. So again, as I said, the internal surface charge distribution is going to change. So the sigma is going to be now non-uniform, right? So in the second case, the sigma inside is going to be non-uniform. Electric field inside the conductor has to be zero, right? So because so basically Basically the charges on the surface won't feel anything if we displace this plus q charge anywhere along the cavity. So which means the sigma on the outer surface will still be uniform. So that's it for the discussion part guys. So now let's jump right into the problem. Okay guys, so this is how the situation is looking like. I mean I've considered the our shell, thin shell to have some thickness so as to explain the inner surface charge density and the outer surface charge density separately. So again what we discussed is that the electric field at the, inside the meat of the conductor, right, it has to be zero. So by extension, Q enclosed has to be zero. So which means the charges are going to be uh, induced in the inner surface of the conductor. So as to ensure that the net field at a particular point on the conductor is zero. And again, if you sum all of these internal charges, it should give you the answer as minus Q. So now we have to determine the outer surface charge density. So again, guys, the conductor is actually earthed, right? So it is connected to the earth. So the potential of the conductor is zero. Forgot to mention that fact. So now let's talk about the outer surface charge density. So in the outer surface, again, uh, because in because of the presence of this 2Q charge, there'll be some non-uniform sigma on the outer surface. But we don't really care about the sigma again. All we care is the total charge because that's what the question wants us of, right? The presence of a charge outside will not affect the charges inside and the presence of the charges inside won't affect the charges outside. We are going to be using that principle. So Okay, so let's say the sigma on the outer surface uh, is something of this sort. Again, it doesn't matter how exactly it is. As I explained earlier, the charges on the outside, they won't feel any field from the inside of the conductor, right? Let's say I get rid of this plus Q charge for a second. So even in this situation, the outer surface charge distribution is going to be exactly the same by using our previous fact. But the thing is, it, this problem is significantly easier because everywhere inside our conductor, the electric field is zero, which it was not in the previous case, right? Okay, so I should have explained that fact. So if, if you take a Gaussian surface over here, this Gaussian surface is not part of the conductor, right? So there will be some electric field at different points of this Gaussian surface. So inside the conductor, the electric field can be non-zero. But the thing is, if I get rid of all these charges, that internal electric field just completely vanishes. So in this situation, I can say the potential at the surface of our conductor is the same as the potential at the center, right? And why can I say that? Because the electric field is zero. So in essentially the potential difference is defined as minus E dot DL. And if you want to find the potential difference, you have to do a line integral, right? So if you perform a line integral from this, this point uh, at the surface to point at the center, then the electric field there is zero, right? So the potential difference is zero, which means the potential has to be the same. So, and we know that due to earthing, the potential at the surface is zero, which means the potential at the center is also zero. So we can say this. This is one of the reasons that we got rid of the plus Q charge inside. So due to this two Q charge, now we can easily write the potential at the point O. It is going to be K times two Q divided by the distance that is 2R. And now where are the other charges? So the other charges are present at the surface. Now again guys, as I said earlier, the sigma is going to be non-uniform. But as we have to talk about the potential contribution at the center, each of these dq negative dq charges are present at a constant distance of r from the point o so the potential at the point o due to the surface charges is simple because it is k times sigma qi 
divided by r. If we had to write the potential at some point over here, yes, it is going to be zero because of this configuration, excluding the plus q. But because of the non-uniformity of the sigma, it will make it hard for us to write the potential at this point. Whereas in this case, it is fairly simple. So from here, we can write the sigma q, let's, let's call it as sigma q out, and it will be minus q. So, and that is all we wanted guys, because what we wanted is the net charge. So, so on the surface, the net charge, we got it as minus Q. The original configuration, we had a plus Q charge here and some induced charges on the inner surface, right? So this is the original configuration. So now we can bring it back. The whole purpose of getting rid of that was to find the net charge on the surface. So if somebody asks you, what is the potential at the center, then the answer is not zero, okay? Because on the outside, it doesn't matter what happens in the inside, but the inside, it absolutely does depend on what it happens inside, right? We got rid of this plus Q charge for a while. As a result of that, the potential inside will be zero. But now as we bring it in, we have to include the contribution of this plus Q charge here. Also this minus Q charge here. They actually as the potential at the, at the point O, then this will be due to the plus Q contribution, which would be KQ divided by 0.5R, but also due to this minus contribution. Due to this minus contribution and this plus 2Q contribution, it came out to be zero, right, from here. And this will be KQ by 0.5R minus K times Q in divided by R. So this is the answer for the potential at the center. This wasn't what was asked in the question. So the net charge on our conductor is actually minus Q minus Q, which is minus 2Q. Initially, before earthing the conductor, the charge charge was Q. Finally, the charge is minus 2Q. So it is as good as saying a charge of plus 3Q flowed into the earth. And hence our answer will be B in this case. Okay, so that was it for this video, guys. I try to explain a lot of things in this video at once. So consider rewatching it if something didn't make sense. And you can always ask doubts in the, in the comment section. I'll try to answer it. So that was it for this video, guys. Do like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching.